This is the section on Riemann sums, and now we get to talk about the definite integrals. So the definition of a Riemann sum is let f be defined on a closed interval a, b, and let delta be a partition of a, b, given by a, x0 is less than x1 is less than x2, all the way until you get to b, um, where delta xi is the width of each ith sub interval. So basically delta x or delta i, depending on which interval you're in, is going to be the width. Now remember how we calculated the width before? We did b minus a over n. That's how you get the, will, the width delta, okay? Now depending on which x value you're at, it'll be a different x, um, which is why they're talking about the xi sub intervals, okay? So basically, if you have this and you break it up into two, this would be like xi1, okay? However, if you were to break up the graph into four rectangles, you would have x1, x2, and x3, right? And each one is less than the other, b being the bigger value, okay? And then this would be the width delta, this would be the width delta, the width delta, and the width delta. But if you wanted to know the subinterval, it would be a and then delta x1, and then delta x1 and delta x2, so on and so forth, okay? So that's how you would get the intervals that they're talking about there. Um, now I'm erasing this for a reason, okay? Now, going back to this. So it says that the sum, the way you find the area of the whole thing is to take the area of every single rectangle, right? Well, the width is this delta x, okay? And the y values is the f of that um, x value, okay? So you pick a value inside each interval. So say here, like the midpoint idea, right? Here's x1, x2, x3. If you take the midpoint, call this c1, you use that y value to find out the heights of the rectangles, right? Um, and then here, C2, you use this as the height for the next rectangle. This, C3, you use this as the height for the next rectangle. And then this midpoint, C3, C4, would be for the height of that next rectangle, right? And the way you find the areas of those is that y value times the width, okay? This is called the Riemann sum. So we were doing Riemann sums in the the examples from um, the area section. We just didn't call them Riemann sums, but when we were adding up all of those areas, those were Riemann sums, okay? Now the width of the partitions is denoted by delta, the difference of delta x, which is still calculated the same, um, b minus a over n, where n is the number of partitions or the number of rectangles, right? Um, the definition of the definite integral is basically taking the limit as the limit as the delta that um, width goes to zero. So what happens is, is let's say I only had four rectangles, right? This width is this this measurement here. Now, if I wanted to make it smaller, let's say I wanted to take eight rectangles now, right? So I want eight rectangles this time. Well, now notice that instead of the width being this wide, now it's half as wide. Let's say I wanted 16 rectangles, right? Then now the width is even smaller. It's a fourth of what it originally was, okay? And you can keep doing that over and over and over. What happens is, is that if you take the midpoint between the original x value and a, notice that you've got a lot of overage and you've got a lot of underage, for lack of a better word. But when you cut that in half and then you were just looking at these two rectangles, this rectangle here and this rectangle here, right? So the same distance from zero, a to x1 but notice that you have less overage here, okay? Less overage there and there, and then less underneath than you did before, okay? Then if you were to take it and split it up into fourth, four pieces here, 
you would take the middle guy there and split that up take the middle guy here and split that up take the middle guy here split that up and take the middle guy here and split this up again now your overage and your under parts are getting smaller and smaller and smaller so what's happening is is that as you make as you increase the number of rectangles that you use you're decreasing the width of each rectangle because only so many can fit within this space right so as you increase the number of rectangles you're decreasing the width and as you do that you're also decreasing the error in your area calculations so your area value calculations will become more and more and more accurate okay now if you take the number of rectangles to go to infinity that means you've got to fit gobs and gobs and gobs of uh, rectangles in here which means that those widths are going to get tinier and tinier and tinier so those widths are going to eventually go to zero okay so that's what this is saying is if the width goes to zero of all those partitions that's what you're, is called your indefinite integral, okay? But really what you're doing is you're taking the limit as the number of rectangles goes to infinity, okay? Now, the way we calculate it is we, we calculate this, okay? And now notice this is a little bit different than what we were doing with the definite integral. In the definite integral, we didn't have this little subscript and superscript, okay? But when we do have the subscript or superscript, it's something a little bit different, okay? Now this section doesn't tell us how to calculate that just yet, the next section will, but they're just defining this as the limit of all the areas as the number of rectangles goes to zero, or as, I mean, I'm sorry, as the number of rectangles goes to infinity, which is the same thing as saying as the width of the rectangles goes to zero. Now, um, the limit is called the definite integral from A to B. So that's the purpose of these. They're your bounds from A to B. The number A is the lower limit of integration and the number B is the upper limit of, um, of integration, okay? So here's a theorem. It says continuity implies in integrability. I cannot say that word. So it's kind of like the continuity implies differentiability. It also, same thing for integration. Um, here you have the theorem, the definite integral as the area of a region. So the area is going to be calculated using this definite integral. Because remember, that's what this represents. It represents the area of the function with so many rectangles. Um, this is if you are finding the area between the function and the x-axis only, since that's all we've been talking about thus far. Okay, um, so I'm going to go ahead and go into the examples um, and then we'll talk about the examples for part two as well. So here it says set up a definite integral that yields the area of this region. So the region between the function and the x-axis. So that area can be of my function 4x minus x squared. Remember, if you put an s, you have to put a dx. But from what x value to what x value? It starts, this region starts when the x is 1, and it stops when the x value is 4. So this is all they want, is just for me to write the representation of the area as a definite integral. Now this one's a little bit different. Notice that my function is in terms of y now. So when I go to calculate my area, I do my integral, but my function is in terms of y, which means I will need to have dy here, which also means that my bounds will need to be y values. So from what lower y value to what higher y value represents this region? Well, the lowest y value is this one here, which is zero, and the highest y value is this one here, which is actually two. So this is going to be my integral that represents the area of this region, the function below the function between the function and the x-axis. So example three says sketch the region whose area is given by the definite integral. Then use a geometric formula to evaluate the integral. So let's see this one here. Um, I know my numbers are gonna go from x value of zero 
to x value of 2. And I'm just going to put a 1 in the middle. So if I plug in 0 into this function, I will get 3. I'm going to call that 1, this 2, and this 3. So when I plug in 0, I get 3. Or actually, these are going to actually go up higher. So let me just label them. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So when I plug in 0, I get 3. When I plug in 1, I will get 5. And when I plug in 2, I will get 7. So that's the line 2x plus 3. And I am stopping at 2, so this is the region between that function and the x-axis. This is the area we're talking about, okay? So I've sketched the region. In WebAssign, you'll just pick from um, a multiple choice selection. But the next thing they want me to do is then use a geometric formula to evaluate this integral. Well, this is a trapezoid. So the area for a trapezoid is the base times the height 1 plus height 2 over 2. Okay? So that means that I need to find the base and the height 1 and the height 2 come from the two parallel sides. So I do need to know which are my two parallel sides. So these two are my parallel sides. Notice that this side and this side are not parallel. So my base will be this one, the flat one, that has the 90 degree angles. So the width of this base is two units. Height one is this measurement here, which is three. And height two is this measurement here, which is seven over two, because the formula has a two. Well, these twos will reduce and seven plus three is 10. Now again, it's area, so it is unit squared, but I don't know what the units are. So usually when they don't tell you what the units are, you just leave it alone and you just type in 10, okay? These problems don't take a whole lot of time, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do all of 4.3 in one video um, and cut into the last example, which is example four. So it says evaluate the integral using the following values. So, um, and I think I've given you the three values, but I haven't given you the, the um, thing you're going to take the integral of. So this is what you want to find. Okay, so here it's telling you the integral from 2 to 4 of x cubed is 60 units squared. The integral of x from 2 to 4 is 6 units squared. And the integral from 2 to 4 of 1, or just dx, is 2. So what we're going to do here is we're going to split this integral up and take out the coefficients. So we've got 1 fourth, 2 to 4 x cubed, and these are just using our integral rules, minus 2 from 2 to 4 of x, and then plus 9 from 2 to 4 just dx. And again, there is an invisible one there. 9 times 1 is still 9, so it's still okay. Then this information they tell me is 60 then this information they tell me is 6 and this information they tell me is 2. So 1 fourth of 60 I believe is 15 but let me just verify. I never want to assume because then I'll get the wrong answer. Um, so I get this and then I end up with 21 square units. Okay, So that is the end of all of 4.3 with all of its examples.